Rockets are notoriously difficult to perfect and have a habit of exploding sometimes. For this reason, rocket companies do countless engine tests to ensure they're safe and efficient. Join me as we look at 15 incredible rocket engine tests. Number 15, RS-25 Rocket. The Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-25 rocket, which is often referred to as the Space Shuttle main engine, is a liquid fuel cryogenic rocket that was first developed for the Space Shuttle program, but is now being repurposed by NASA for their new super heavy lift vehicle called the Space Launch System. It was designed and produced by the American company Rocketdyne and works by burning cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants. Each engine is able to produce an incredible 418,000 pounds of thrust at takeoff, and three were used on each shuttle. Of course, since the early 1980s when the first RS-25 tests were conducted, technology has progressed significantly. So to prepare the rockets for the new space program, which will also put them under different pressures, NASA has entered a new period of testing. While the main science behind the rockets remains the same, a new engine controller unit is being tested, and they also need to be rated under low liquid temperatures with a higher inlet pressure because of the new spacecraft design. And as you can see from this footage that was recorded of a test in early 2022, everything seems to be progressing as well as would be hoped. Number 14, SpaceX Raptor Engine. With SpaceX, Elon Musk has revolutionized the idea of spaceflight by making it something that not only governmental organizations can develop, but private companies can too. The next generation of spacecraft that the company is building is a super heavy lift launch vehicle called the SpaceX Starship. And with the requirement that most parts are reusable and as efficient as possible, a whole new engine design was needed. Known as the Raptor engine, it uses a different fuel mix to the previous engines built by SpaceX. So instead of Kerolox, it's filled with Methylox, which is a combination of cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Offering as much as 510,000 pounds of thrust, it's more than twice as powerful as their previous Merlin engine, and it's planned to be used in the Super Heavy booster and as the second stage of the Starship spacecraft. If all goes to plan, this will be a crucial part of the vehicles that will launch new satellites and take missions to the Moon and Mars, with each Starship booster requiring 33 of them, and each Starship spacecraft using six. From the footage of these tests, you can only imagine how incredible it'll be when these are finally put into operation for real. Number 13, Pulsar Fusion Mach 7. One of the biggest concerns about the increase in spacecraft launches is the huge amount of pollution that's released when burning so much fuel to generate the thrust that's needed. But there's a company hoping to make this a thing of the past. Pulsar Fusion, which is part funded by the UK government, has been testing the Mach 7 Green Hybrid rocket, which uses the high-density polyethylene fuel that's made from recycled plastic along with nitrous oxide as the oxidizer. When the two burn together, as in this test footage, the result is an enormous amount of thrust, but a non-toxic plume that's made up of mainly water vapor. And that's because these propellants have a low production energy requirement. Their overall carbon footprint is significantly less than any alternatives currently being used. It's hoped that after these successful tests, the rocket could soon be used for low orbit launches, and the company also has plans to develop a hyperspeed propulsion engine with nuclear fusion that they say could be possible within a decade and would more than have the journey time between Earth and Mars. Number 12, Spaceship Two. There is a race on between several private space companies to offer paying customers the chance to enter orbit, and each one has taken its own approach to the challenge. For Virgin Galactic, the vehicle is currently called Spaceship Two, and it's carried to altitude underneath a mothership aircraft, which reduces the amount of thrust needed to propel it to its peak height. This footage, which was captured in 2013, shows Virgin Galactic's first powered test flight, where after reaching an altitude of 47,000 feet, the craft is released from the mothership and engaged in engine burn for 16 seconds. The engine is so powerful that within this time, it reached a speed of Mach 1.2, so it broke the sound barrier, and the company soon hailed it as a complete success. Unfortunately, this hasn't been the case with every test Virgin Galactic has conducted, having had one that resulted in the loss of life, this reinforces how important it is to put rockets through their paces before they're certified, as they're some of the most complicated machines to build with so many variables. It was on the back of this test, though, that Spaceship Two was able to continue development and take its first passengers to its operational height in 2019. 
After a further high-profile flight, when Richard Branson himself was on board, tickets are now on sale for around $450,000, and the company hopes commercial flights will begin by 2023. Number 11. Sapphire One and Big Less Copenhagen Suborbitals is a Danish-based organization that's staffed by amateur rocket enthusiasts that build crowd-funded devices. Their stated aim is to send one of their members to the edge of space with a unique design, and in the past decade, they've performed a number of different tests. This footage was recorded at an event on December 30th, 2011, where they tested two rockets, Sapphire 1, which was the first active guided rocket they designed, with the test looking at the effectiveness of controllable guidance rudders, and Big Less, which is the most powerful hybrid engine they had designed at the time, and was created to be able to take a launch vehicle to test altitudes. After both tests performed well, the rockets were soon scheduled for actual launches, and while the Big Less launch in August of 2012 didn't entirely go to plan, the Sapphire 1 launch in June of 2013 was declared a success. The company has since gone through a series of controversies relating to one of their founders, but their overall aim still remains, and they hope to be able to successfully and safely send someone to a suborbital spaceflight at some point in this decade. Number 10. Blue Origin BE3 Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com, has also invested heavily into the development of spaceflight with his company, Blue Origin. And it, too, is working to offer commercial flights, the capability to send satellites to space and to secure contracts with NASA for greater aspirations of exploration. To do this required the development of an effective engine, and in the early 2010s, they began designing and building the BE3, Expected to generate 110,000 pounds of thrust, it uses a pump-fed engine design with a combustion tap-off cycle. Now, this means it's able to control the intake of small amounts of combustion gases from the main combustion chamber, which are used to power the engine turbo pumps. The fuel used in the BE-3 is a more traditional liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, and this test, which was conducted in 2013, went exactly to plan. In it, the engine performs a full-duration simulated suborbital burn, which demonstrated deep throttle, full power, long duration, and reliable restart in one test sequence. And despite NASA ultimately choosing to go with a different design for the project, the BE-3 is more than capable and is being incorporated into Blue Origin's future ambitions. Number 9. GMLRS Rocket Lockheed Martin is involved in a number of different avenues of weapon research, and one of the most profitable for the company is rocket technology for missiles. While perfectly adequate and destructive munitions already exist, research is continuing to develop rockets that are far more accurate and reliable than ever before, which gives militaries the ability to strike precise targets and significantly reduce the chance of civilian casualties. That's one of the main driving forces behind the design of the GMLRS munitions, which stands for Guided Multiple Launch Rocket System. And this footage is a series of GMLRS tests that took place at the White Sands Missile Range in 2018. Designed to be launched from a variety of different launchers, to work in all weather conditions, and to be rapidly deployable, each rocket can carry a payload of up to 200 pounds and accurately reach targets within 93 miles. These particular tests are looking at the effectiveness of tail-mounted control surfaces and saw rockets launched at various angles to monitor how this impacts their flight trajectory. As expected, the rockets performed exactly how the preliminary data had suggested, and that goes some way to explain why the company recently celebrated the sale of more than 50,000 of them. Number 8. Rocket Lab Electron as the world becomes more interconnected, we're more and more reliant on satellite networks to aid communication and support modern technologies. One of the things that prohibits companies from sending satellites into orbit, however, is the sheer cost. There are a number of manufacturers that are trying to reduce these costs and make orbit far more accessible. One of these is Rocket Lab, and it's developed a rocket called the Electron. Specifically targeting the small satellite launch market, the rocket uses liquid propellant engines, which the company calls Rutherford engines, and are the first electric pump-fed engines to be used to power an orbital spacecraft. This footage, which was recorded on the Mahia Peninsula on the coast of New Zealand's North Island, shows a launch that took place in May of 2017. It was originally meant to orbit, but after a software malfunction that occurred at a height of 139 miles, it was destroyed by a range safety officer to eliminate any risk to the ground. 
It was discovered that what went wrong was a single line of code, but because the launch was officially a failure, it was retrospectively called a test. Number seven, Ares-1. NASA's Constellation program between 2005 and 2009 was set with the task of finishing the International Space Station and returning humans to the moon by 2020. But because of escalating costs and reducing budgets, it was canceled before achieving its main goals. One thing that had happened, however, was the development of Ares-1, which was the crew launch vehicle for the program, and this was planned to carry the newly developed Orion capsule into space. At 308 feet tall, the two-stage solid propellant rocket was able to produce up to 3.4 million pounds of thrust and was seen as a safe, reliable, and cost-effective means of orbital insertion. The first stage was a reusable solid rocket derived from the Space Shuttle Solid Rocket Booster, and the upper stage was based on the shuttle's external tank. And while the first scheduled flight was never able to take place before the project was canceled, there were several tests. This one took place in September of 2009 to great excitement and saw crowds travel far and wide to see what was, at the time, believed to be NASA's next great innovation. The spectacular smoke cloud could be seen from many miles away, and it can't help but feel like a shame the rocket was never pointed upward and tested in the way in which it was intended to be used. Number 6. Long March 5 The Chinese space program has developed at an incredible pace in recent years, and this has led to the design of the Long March 5 rocket, which is a heavy lift launch vehicle. It was the first from the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology to use non-hypergolic liquid propellants, which are those that don't ignite upon contact with air, and is similar in power to the American Delta IV Heavy, with the ability to generate up to 600,000 pounds of thrust. This would allow it to take payloads weighing as much as 25 tons into orbit, and has already done so six times. But to get to the point where it was trusted to safely take satellites and people into space, it underwent one of the most comprehensive testing programs in Chinese Space Agency history. This footage is from August of 2015 and is the first ignition test of the Long March 5 second stage, which is powered by two YF-50D boosters, which burn dinitrogen tetroxide and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine as fuel. The success of this test was widely praised and broadcast across China's news channels and was seen as the final confirmation that the Long March 5 was a reliable design, leading to its first full launch in November of 2016. Number 5. J2X While the world may be more familiar with the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, it's the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi where NASA, along with more than 50 other organizations, conduct the majority of rocket testing. With at least five dedicated testing stands, it's able to fire and monitor rockets of all sizes. And if you visit, you may well be lucky enough to be there on a test day. That's how this footage was recorded, and it shows in 2013 the test of a J2X liquid-fueled cryogenic rocket engine. It was originally designed to be used on the Ares rockets as part of the Constellation program, but have more recently been repurposed to be part of the Space Launch System. The J2X uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as its fuel, and each one is able to generate 294,000 pounds of thrust. Despite being found to be a successful design, testing of the J2X has currently been paused because NASA has ultimately chosen another design, the RL-10, to power the exploration upper stage of the SLS, and the potential need for the J2X is under review. There is a good chance, however, that it will be more suited to piloted missions, such as ones to Mars, so it could well be seen on a launch vehicle in the future. Number 4. GEM-60 Originally developed in the 1980s by Northrop Grumman Space Systems and still in use today, graphite epoxy motors are a series of solid rocket boosters that use hydroxyl-terminated polybutadiene as their fuel, used with a number of launch vehicles such as the Delta II, III, and IV, and currently the Atlas V. One of the most recent versions, known as the GEM-60, was developed in the early 2000s for use on the Delta IV family of vehicles and was retired in 2019 after the final Delta IV medium launch. Despite being based on reliable technology, regular tests of engines like these are conducted to ensure they're being made to the right specifications and that they're still performing as expected. And this footage is one that took place in 2012 at the Alliant Tech Systems ATK facility near Promontory in Utah. 
Amazingly, the camera is around a half a mile away from the rocket, which shows just how powerful they are, and all the flame, smoke, and noise was generated in a burn that lasted just 98 seconds. The Delta IV vehicles, depending on their payload, were built with either two or four Gem 60 rockets, each of which were 43 feet long, 60 inches in diameter, and were the longest burning of all Gem rocket variants, and could achieve up to 197,000 pounds of thrust. Number 3. SpaceX Starship SpaceX has conducted countless rocket tests in the past decade to perfect its reusable system that significantly reduces wastage and costs. And the company is just as proud of its successes as its failures, because this only pushes them forward to improve their designs. The SpaceX Starship is the company's new super heavy lift launch vehicle that uses liquid oxygen and liquid methane as its fuel and will be customizable for a range of tasks, from lifting cargo into orbit to carrying a lander to the moon. To launch, it fires 33 Raptor engines to reach the edge of space, at which point the spacecraft itself separates from the booster and then returns to the ground by grid fins that keep it in the right orientation, and then a series of smaller rockets that slow its descent. The Super Heavy booster is 230 feet tall and can hold up to 3,600 tons of propellant, and while all of this fuel will be spent by the time of its separation, it's still a complicated task to get it to land exactly on target. This footage was recorded of a test flight in March of 2021, and after successfully reaching altitude, it was the first time that a Super Heavy booster successfully landed upright on the ground, but there were clearly some issues that still needed to be worked out. Around eight minutes after touching down, it detonates from beneath, seemingly so confident in what it had just done that it was trying to take off again. Number 2. Blue Origin BE-7 Blue Origin has a number of different ambitions when it comes to future activities in space, and while the company recently lost out to SpaceX and the reward of a valued contract with NASA, that hasn't stopped its engineers from proceeding with the development of a new range of rockets. One of particular interest is the BE-7, which is specifically designed for use on a lunar lander in the lower gravity environment. Producing up to 10,000 pounds of thrust, which is much, much less than other rockets under development by Blue Origin, but offers more control for soft landings. It uses hydrogen and oxygen propellants in a dual expander combustion cycle. The way this works and the extreme temperatures that are produced means that the company has had to explore new additive manufacturing technologies to be able to create a combustion chamber at a reasonable cost that can prevent the engine from melting. But this test that took place at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, shows they're making very good progress. From proving that the BE-7 is a viable lander rocket, Blue Origin's hoping that either NASA will reconsider the technology for use in a government-sponsored mission to the moon, or may eventually simply decide to launch one of their own, which truly would be a first for a private space company. Number 1. V-2 during the Second World War, scientists on both sides were working on the development of game-changing weapons that would turn the tide in their favor. While the Allies in the end focused on atomic weaponry, which ultimately ended hostilities, the Germans focused on building rocket weaponry. And the research that was conducted during the war in the name of destruction was what ultimately paved the way to design the rockets that would make the space race possible. The leading Nazi rocket designer Werner von Braun and more than 100 personnel ended up working for America after the war, but their original creation was the devastating V-2 rocket, which was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. Intended to be a vengeance weapon, which would be used to wreak revenge on the cities of countries that bombed regions in Germany, the V-2 used ethanol and liquid oxygen as its fuel and was able to reach speeds of up to 3,500 miles per hour while carrying a one-ton warhead. By the end of the war, more than 3,000 had been launched at targets and killed thousands of innocent people, but they had only entered service in 1944 after the several years of testing that were needed to iron out the problems. Footage from the time shows just how impressive the technology behind the missiles were, even if they were built for evil purposes. And after a number of failures, the first successful launch took place in 1942, at which point one of the scientists involved said, this is a new era of transportation, that of space travel. Watch our vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.